Did you hear? Diamond Head Barnaby is getting out on parole tomorrow. Just took a sucker for this pile. Now he's on the hook for more. Did you hear what he said about Barnaby? Yeah. So what? So what? So what about those diamonds? I didn't think he'd be getting out of stir until Christmas. So he's getting out sooner. So we'll have to act sooner. your money, Ed. Now the world's yours. So just keep that chin up. <coughs> Thank you, Warden. Somehow I often suspected you could have beaten this rap if you'd wanted to. Maybe I didn't want it. Maybe sometimes prison's a pretty safe place to be. It's a good place not to be, according to Boston Blackie. Say, he's a friend of yours, isn't he? The only real one I ever had. He never forgets this old place. Sent me a whole raft of new uniforms for the ball club. You lost a swell pitcher when Blackie left here. He's a great guy. Yes, he is. Well, Ed, good luck. with pigtails and come back to a full-grown woman. I spent all morning getting this permanent. <laughs> I didn't think it was pigtails you wanted. You'd look good to me anyway. Oh, it's good to have a father again. I've missed you terribly. And I... <laughs> oh, we better sit down, Dad. That place didn't do you any good. Oh, but wait till you see the apartment and the sunroom I fixed up for you. Why, you'll be rid of that cough in no time. I'm afraid not. I can be a very efficient nurse. Oh, I don't doubt that. But it just isn't in the cards for me to find out. This town isn't big enough for me and certain other people. I can't stay. Can't oh. stay? But, Dad, I've been planning such wonderful things for us. I'd like that more than anything in the world. You know that. But it can't be. Someday, maybe things will be different. But right now, I've got to work fast. Before I leave town, there are those diamonds. They're mine. Rightfully mine. I know that. I want you to have them, Betty. I've gone through enough to keep them for you, and nothing's going to stop you getting them. Now, maybe in a couple of days, maybe by Friday, I'll get in touch with you. There you are, Mr. Barnaby. Box 13. It's yours for 30 days. Thank you. Mr. Black? Mr. Horatio Black? Horatio Black? Ain't that Boston Blackie's name? So what? Well, that porter there. Telegram from Mr. Horatio Black? Uh, here, porter. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Hey, Porter, 
That's it. I'm sorry, I thought you were paging me. You ain't Mr. Black? Oh, no, his name's Faraday. Faraday? Yeah. Black? They sure don't sound the same. Yeah, just forget you ever saw me. Yes, sir, thank you. I naturally forget anything without being paid. <laughs> Why don't you keep your big mouth shut? Well, Chief, now you're a big man, and I thought he ought to know you. Oh, well, come on, let's look up our old friend. Boston Blackie's calling card. Yeah, we might have known it. Where's your key? Get those uh, things off. Just a second. Telegram for Mr. Horatio Black? Telegram for Mr. Horatio Black? Water. Hey, up. Uh, is you sure that you's Mr. Black? Yes, that's right. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Ain't heard anybody call you Horatio in years. Something I've been trying to live down. This must be Diamond Ed Barnaby's daughter. Say, what's it all about? I see by the tea leaves we can expect a visit from two very old friends. Are you kidding? This is coffee we're drinking. Our past is catching up on this run. Uh-oh. Well, if it isn't Boston Blackie in the run. How do you do? You're improving, Inspector. That's the first accurate thing I've ever heard you say. <sighs> Uh, won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. Thank you. We were going to skip lunch, but we kind of changed our mind. Thought we'd pick up a little snack, you know. You all eating again, sir? What do you mean, again? It ain't been 20 minutes since I cleaned up that number one luncheon. I remembers that gentleman. He took two portions of mashed potatoes and chocolate eclair. Yes, sir. Think of that figure, Faraday. <laughs> What'll it be this time, gentlemen? Is you eating or is you ain't? No, they ain't. They're just going to visit with a couple of old friends. Well, I wouldn't exactly say we were old friends, but we certainly should be well acquainted. I guess we've been closely linked at times. Not close enough, Blackie. Someday you're gonna go too far, and I'm warning you now. I'll send you right back where I helped send you once before. Oh, that's just enemy propaganda. Mm -hmm. You know, it's nice to see you, Inspector. They tell me you'll play a very good game of gin rummy. Will you teach me? With whose cards? <laughs> hey, what is that? That's for my ulcers, from a famous stomach specialist in Rochester. And uh, speaking of ulcers, how are yours, Inspector? Still barking? Yeah, worse than ever. Are you sure that stuff's good for you? Why, it's given me an entirely different outlook on life. Yeah? It's made the world a better place to live in. Why, you know, I even smile now when I see a police inspector. Oh. You take this regularly and your ulcers will never bother you. In fact, nothing will. You mind if I try it? Well, no, not at all. Good. You take that three times a day, and I'll guarantee it'll have an effect. It's all right. I thought you were going to stay in Chicago, Blackie. What's the idea coming back to town so soon? I'm going to write a book. Yeah, you better learn to read first. Never mind the voice in the gallery, Runt. It's the association. What's your book going to be about, Blackie? It's going to be about you and me, Inspector. Mm -hmm. Yes. While I'm writing it, the Runt's going on his honeymoon. Honeymoon? Oh, who'll oh. marry him? My dear Mr. Matthews, have you ever heard of Miss Dixie Rose Blossom? Dixie Rose Blossom? Yeah. See, I saw her do a bubble dance at the Belex. Gee, she's terrific. Now, that's a fine place for an officer of the law. Well, I was there on official business, Chief, uh, checking over the show. Mm-hmm. Your coming back so soon couldn't by any chance have something to do with the fact that Diamond Ed Barnaby was just paroled. Well, I don't know what you're talking about, Inspector. Diamond Ed, Ed Barnaby. I haven't heard that name for years. Diamond. The rug. That must be our girl. Uh, Miss Barnaby? Yes. I'm Boston Blackie, and this is the run. How do you do? And I'm the girl who's going to burden you with plenty of trouble. Oh, trouble's my middle name. But he always comes out smelling of roses. <laughs> roses? You want roses? Uh, no, no. Uh, but I could use an orchid. An orchid? Okay. Yes, O-R-C-H-I-D. Orchid. Oh, orchid, orchid. There you are. Keep the change. Thank you. For you. <laughs> oh, thanks, but just uh, why? Anyone who could trace me down as well as you did deserves one. Thank you, Mr. Black. Uh, Blackie's the name. All right, Blackie. Suppose we grab a cab and you can tell me your story on the way. Come on, run. Open the door for me. Yes, sir. 
I left Dad, he promised to get in touch with me on Friday. Did he? No. Early Friday morning, I received a telephone call to meet him in the arcade building by the safe deposit boxes. I waited all day, but he never showed up. Well, I haven't heard a word from him since. Well, I don't blame you for being upset. Why did you come to me? Well, I didn't know where to turn or what to do, and then I remembered that Dad told me if I was ever in any real trouble that you would have me. <laughs> well, you certainly came to the right guy. Pull over to the curb. into that cab behind you. Hey, Matthews! If you lose us, we're on our way to Arthur Manletters. You know the address? Get after him! and for the justice of peace, and you're for me, and for the bashful bride and the blushing groom. <laughs> well, is this the little bride? I'm the victim. Meet me, Bob. I beg your pardon. Oh, yes, that's charming. Come in, Miss Blossom. Say. Some layout. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm a little short of help. Uh, may I? My butler chauffeur's 1A in the army. My cook's got a better job in a munitions factory. Well, the others will be here soon, shall we? Okay, Colonel. Colonel? Well... <laughs> the scenery gets better and better. Yes, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> now, now, you will make yourself at home, won't you? Okay, General. General? Well, that's a pretty quick promotion. I'm sorry, pal. I forgot myself. That's the music from my big number in Doll Babies, and I picked up my cue without thinking. <laughs> well, it's too bad you still have to think. Say, this looks like the Rogues' Gallery. Well, as a matter of fact, it is, and it's one of the best in the country, I, I think. You see, studying the underworld and publishing books about them is a hobby of mine, and I've got most of them from, from A.B. the Ape to Zeke the Zipper. <laughs> oh, excuse me, will you? I'll be right back. How do you do? I'm Mr. Potts, the Justice of the Peace. Oh, well, come right in, Mr. Potts. I'm delighted to see you. The bridegroom hasn't arrived yet, oh. but the bride is here. Uh -huh. uh, yes, she's here. <laughs> right? Oh, uh, Miss Blossom, uh, this is Mr. Potts, the Justice of Peace. Hi, you, Potsy. Uh, Looks just like a guy I used to bend the elbow with. Yeah, well, it may be. Lose that seeing eye. Pretend you're driving off and wait for me on the other street. I'll be out in a few minutes. Hey, Matthews! Better send Faraday a wire. Tell him we've arrived hale and hearty. I'm going to park you here with my friend, Mr. Manletter, until we get back with something to report. Oh, you won't have to wait long. Hope not. Well, hello. Just Come on in. We're all ready for the day. wedding. Just a minute. Oh, uh, this is Miss Barnaby. Well, is this going to be a double wedding? Well, you're a little ahead of yourself, Mr. Cupid. I'm leaving Miss Barnaby in your care for a few hours. And no questions asked. Uh, no questions. Oh, well, where's Dixie? Where's Dixie? Oh, she's here. She's here, ready for the big event. Oh, hello, Dixie. My big boy. 
Bridesmaid. It won't be like I'm entertaining at a convention. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but uh, the ceremony must wait. What oh. do you mean? Nothing has a priority on this wedding. Oh, now, wait a minute, Blackie. After all is said and done, you know, a guy only gets married once in a great while, and well, I think Dixie's right. There's no argument there, Rod. But uh, this can't wait. See you later, Miss Barnaby. Well, now, really, Come do on, Rod. Oh, oh Miss Blackie, Barnaby. I... Say, wait a minute. Who's the boss here? Blackie or me? Well, uh, well, honey, I'm awfully sorry. I, I, I'm just as anxious to get married as you are, but well, wherever Blackie goes, I gotta go. And after all, it's only gonna be a difference of an hour or so, and I'll be back. Come on, Ruth. Out you go. Now, now, I think if you and I open a vintage bottle of champagne, it won't seem like an hour. Come on, Letty, old man. Lead me to it. Yes. <laughs> well, are we ready? The main event has to be postponed an hour. The groom's still weighing in. Don't be a sucker. We know you turned that hundred grand into diamonds. Sure I did, but they're mine. And that's all you're going to get out of me. And all the time you were hiding in the stir, we sat back and waited. Now you're going to give us some action. Those diamonds are going to my daughter. And if anything ever happens to me, you're going to have Boston Blackie on your neck. <laughs> Ain't nothing funny about it, Mug. Sign opposite 42, and the box is yours for 30 days. 42, huh? There we are. Oh, oh now look what you've done. You're very clumsy. You can knock down more things than a guy in a shooting gallery. Well, I'm sorry, I... Didn't... Okay, okay. Sorry, no harm done. The box is right over there. Thanks. Keep him busy. All right. You selling any cigars here? Oh, yes. Most any kind. Oh, really? What's well, fine. I uh, have a friend of mine, so I suppose, a special friend, a packet Dermis Kyvie cigar. He's an uh, Aphrodite. I like the way he's a packet. Uh, well, there might be something over here you'd like. Oh, thanks very much. I don't know what they are, but I, I know I can tell when I see them. Please, we do have to... Uh, oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Any one of them. Yes. Well, I don't know. You see them other kind uh, of... Oh, uh, Ron, I put all my papers away and you haven't bought a cigar. Well, yeah, you you have have a... I haven't got much time. Oh, Thank you very much. Well, see you later. Thanks for dinner. I was hoping the mummy would feel like talking by now, but tie him up, won't you? What did you do with those rocks, Ed? I'll tell. I'll tell. See? Deposit boxes. Arcade building. Box 13. Keys on the ring you took from me. You heard him. Get gone. Don't get lonesome, Ed. I'll be right back. Five cents, please.
Hiya, Chief. Yeah, hey, just in time. Hey, how much ketchup did Blackie put in this stuff? Ooh, I wouldn't be knowing, Chief. It's your ulcers. Well, I guess it's all right. Yeah, that's good. Hey, uh, you were supposed to be sticking with Blackie. Well, I waited in front of man letters for Blackie to come out, and suddenly I got a hunch something was wrong. Don't you ever get a hunch that something is right? Well, see if you can answer that telephone. Uh, Faraday's office, Matthew speaking. This is Diamond Ed Barnaby. It's Barnaby. I'll take it. Hello, Barnaby. I'm on a spot. Two men are going to the arcade building. Safe deposit boxes. Open number 13. There are some diamonds. Hello. Hello, Barnaby. Hello. Operator. Operator, trace that call. Back so soon? Yes, I have some papers I want to put in my box. Say, how about one of them cigars? Oh, you mean one of your fancy kind? Yeah. Right over here, sir. Hey, wait a minute. What's the idea? You can ask questions later. I just... Shut up. All right, that's all, Blackie. Put them up and turn around. A little something here for your wrists. Oh, not these things again, Inspector. You're not going to get out of these. These are new type. <laughs> Is there anything wrong with a man renting a safe deposit box? Hey, what's going on here? You ever see these two fellows before? Yes, sir. I rented him a box a little while ago. Well, thank you very much. Yes, but that's not the box I rented him. Hey, Chief, that's at box 13. No, uh, there's nothing wrong with a man renting a safety deposit box, but there is something wrong with a man fishing around a box that doesn't belong to him. Open it up, Matthews. Let's see what he was after. There you are. Hey, Chief, this box is empty. I'll get the book and look it up. Uh, don't bother. That box belongs to Diamond Ed Barnaby. Ho, oh, oh. ho. Once in your life, you're talking too much, Blackie, and I'm going to hold it against you. You bumped him off to get the key and grab those diamonds. Bumped who off? Ed Barnaby. You stuck your neck out this time, Blackie. It was me Barnaby was talking to on the phone when you shot him. <laughs> Television has certainly made terrific strides. It's got to the point when police inspectors can see things that never happened. Mm. Hey, Chief. Maybe if we took them over to the Flamingo Club, it wouldn't take television to see what they did. Start walking. Sure. We had a hustle to get here before the cops. Cops? Yeah, Faraday and Matthews are on the way up here with Boston Blackie and the Runt. They said something about Blackie bumping off Barnaby. When we got the arcade, there was Boston Blackie trying to get into box 13 when Faraday nabbed him. What we want to know is, how did the cops get wise to that safety deposit box? This is no time for riddles. Right now, we've got something more important on our hands. Come on. All right, get out. It's a little early to go night clubbing, don't you think so, Inspector? All right, go ahead. All right. I sit down. Sit down. Nobody telephoned the police from here, and nobody was bumped off. The call was traced here. Well, couldn't some dope make a mistake? <laughs> There's your answer, Inspector. <laughs> now, if you want to, you can look around some more, but I'll buy a round of drinks for everybody you turn up. Well, that's very generous of you, Herschel, but you're forgetting the inspector's ulcers. Or uh, did my remedy cure them? Don't get too flip, Blackie. I'm not through with you. I'm still holding you on suspicion. Suspicion of what? Stealing something from an empty box? Or murdering the little man that wasn't there? It wasn't the little man who wasn't there who talked to me on the telephone, and I have Matthews as a witness. Well, I wouldn't brag about that. 
Now, if there's anything else I can do, Inspector... Maybe later, but I've got a hunch a little questioning of Blanky down at headquarters will solve my problem. I'll answer any question you care to ask me, Inspector, including the $64 one. Hmm. But you don't want it on your conscience that you're keeping an innocent bridegroom from the altar. Let him go. M but, Chief... Let him go! Thanks, Blackie. Well, oh, that's all right, Run. Someday you may wish you were still handcuffed to Matthews. But, of course, that's something every man must find out for himself. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we go along, Inspector? Go ahead. Thank you. When we go down to the office, maybe you'll open up and tell us where you hid Barnaby's body. The way you're wasting gasoline and tires, Inspector, I have a good mind to report you to the ration board. Want a cigarette? No. Thank you. All right, now if you'll cut out your horse and around and answer my questions. Will I win the set of encyclopedias? Uh, hey, what are you doing? Putting up blackout drapes. I gotta cover these windows. There's a trial blackout tonight. Well, all right, but make it snappy, will you? Uh, I'll get that, Inspector. Dr. Faraday's asylum is for you. Hello, Faraday. Oh, are you comfortable? Yes, thanks. Yeah, Faraday speaking. Listen. Look, I'm a busy man. Can you... Cut it out, will you? No, not you. Listen, I'm a busy man. Can't you give that case to somebody else? I can come back later if you want to... Uh, uh, will you talk? shut up? No, I don't mean you. All right, give it to me. Wanted for bigamy. Five foot, ten and a half tall. Blonde hair. Brown eyes. Mole on left shoulder. Fair complexion. When last seen was kissing a second husband goodbye. Wanted for bigamy. Yeah, I got it. Inspector, look. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Get me out of this. Get me out of this. There you are, Inspector. Why, you... That your card? Uh, well, I missed that. Uh, here's another one that Blackie showed me, though, that I, I do pretty well. Maybe that's Blackie now. Yes, that's probably Here it. comes the groom. Sweep up the room. Oh. Hello. Where's Blackie? Oh, he'll be coming along soon. He always does. Oh, hello, honey blossom. Did you miss me, baby? No, I love playing second fiddle to Blackie. Oh, look, is he all right? Oh, he's all right, Blackie, all right. Of course he's all right. Did you ever see Blackie when he wasn't all right? Oh. He just got a little mixed up with Faraday, that was all. You mean Blackie's in trouble with the police? Oh, no, darling, that's nothing new. Don't worry. Well, has it anything to do with my father? Well, uh, I, I don't know. He, he just told me to go ahead and get married. So come on, let's everybody hurry up. Well, oh, we can't hurry because Pa Twin, uh, the little justice of the... But I'll get him back. Oh, I'll, well, get, him back. I'll get him back. Hurry up. Hurry up. Oh, hello, baby. Take a look at this, Joe. When Blackie gets away, he's a hard man to find. Peck and I wish we could find him. Why? Well, if you put two and two together, it adds up something like this. Blackie didn't open up that box 13 just for his health. That's right. He might have had that box open before Faraday got there. That's why Faraday found that box empty. Because Blackie already had his mitts on those diamonds. Now, don't that make sense? Maybe. But if Blackie had the diamonds, wouldn't Faraday have found them? Don't that make sense? Yeah, I know, but Blackie's pretty smart, and Faraday ain't. Well, you can't argue with me about Faraday being dumb. But the old Flatfoot hasn't all the dumbness around here. Suppose you let me do the thinking, huh? We've done pretty well up to now.
Well, you certainly are a fine-looking threesome. I mean foursome. Oh, thank heaven the Marines have landed. The situation is well in hand. Yes, but it isn't. Who did this? I think there were a couple of pals of Herschel's. Well, they certainly weren't pals of ours. Yeah, I might have known Joe Herschel would have something to do with this. Oh, Blackie, it was wonderful, though. They came in with their guns level like this. It's great stuff well, for you the book. You can give me the gruesome details tomorrow, Arthur. Right now, I'm concerned about Betty. We're going to the Flamingo Club, Rudd. We've got work to do. Okay. Say, wait a minute. Are you going to walk out on me again? Well, honey, I'm awfully sorry, but i got to go with oh, Blackie. Blackie. Gotta... Look at this note. Isn't this wonderful for the book? It says, bring the diamonds. That's it. I'm supposed to bring some diamonds I haven't got. I. You see, I'm doing a book. I'm publishing a book of Blackie's uh, criminal. Get that brooch. And this looks wonderful. It's a real thing on the oh, whole gee, thing. Oh, gee, honey, I'm awfully sorry. This had to happen on our wedding day. But don't worry about anything. Everything is going to be all right. And I'll be back very quick. Oh. <laughs> Goodbye, dear. Don't you worry about a thing. Come on. Come on, Come on Blackie. What brought on that blitz crew? Blackie, Blackie, wait a minute, will you? I've got the camera. We'll get some great pictures. You two amuse yourself, will you, while we're going? I'll be back. Oh, all right, all right. I know they're fakes. Look, don't tell Dixie. <laughs> You see what I see? Parody. Hey, suppose I let him chase me and you can sneak in. No, oh, no, I'll go in the back way. That's better than your playing tag with Faraday. Now listen, Blackie, be careful, because you know those guys are killers. Yeah. Well, if I'm not out in 20 minutes, you fellas can come after me. Grand's the most I can give you, Joe. Forty grand? Why, they're worth twice that much. Forty's tops. Look, don't squeeze me. They're hot. <laughs> you won't see such beauties again. I'm not a collector, Joe. With me, it's just cold business. Is this ten spot the smallest you got? It's not only the smallest, it's the oldest I got. What do you got there, fella? A bull fiddle? It ain't no cow fiddle, mister. Let me help him. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Evening, boss. Where's your manners, Ignard? Oh, uh, I beg your pardon. May, uh, may I use your wash basin? Don't you know better than to bust in a lady's dressing room without knocking? I said, don't you know better than... Say, what are you doing? Putting on makeup or taking it off? <laughs> My bull fiddle, where did you put it? I put it right there. 
You're looking for your bull fiddle. A friend of yours just took it inside. Thank you, sir. Then there's no deal. Sorry, Joe. I can depend on you to keep your mouth shut, huh? And my nose clean. Well, if you should change your mind, uh... uh, -uh. Thank you very much. <laughs> and thank you, too. Blackie, glad you had sense enough to answer that note. Yes, I know when I'm hooked. Stop stalling. You've got those Barnaby diamonds? Oh. <laughs> sure, I have them. But there was something in that illiterate note of yours about me getting a girl in exchange. We're going to get those stones first. Give them the once over. If you find them, I'm slipping. Cut it out. Nothing doing until Miss Betty Barnaby is signed, sealed, and delivered to me. All right, Beck. Unlock the door. Inside, Blackie. Just a minute. That's our part of the bargain. Now, how about yours? That's fair enough. There you are, gentlemen. Well, that's a new way of hiding diamonds. Well, why didn't you look in the pipe? I will get... Who? Well, it's been nice seeing you, the both of you. Sorry, I can't say the feeling is mutual. What's going on here? Mr. Herschel, meet Miss Betty Barnaby and Boston Blackie. And none of us is charmed, I'm sure. Beck and me was right, Joe. Blackie had those diamonds all the time. We did a little snooping of our own, and this is what we found. Let's see them. These aren't the diamonds. But Joe, those are the things that you... You heard me. I say these aren't the diamonds. How would you know, Herschel? Because I've seen the real ones before. So you tried to cross us, did you? <laughs> from the inside. There's the rotten man letter down there. 
I hope I can make them hear me. Hey, run! Say, how long have we been here? Well, it's, it's not quite 20 minutes yet. I got it. That's Blackie. Hey, Blackie! Blackie! Come on, give me a boost, will sure. you? Sure. Come on, I'll put your hand. <laughs> Like he has got the real diamonds. Ladies first, Betty. Watch your step now. It's only a few feet. Please take a hand, Ruth. One more step and you're a dead pigeon. Feed it, you two. Don't call the cops. Come on, get out. It's a blackout. Don't you try anything. Where'd he go? He can't get far in a blackout. There you are. Come on, hon. There you are. Where's Blackie? They got him. What do you mean? They, they got him up there on the roof. There he is. There he is. Oh, sorry, I can't invite you gentlemen down here with me, but I'm afraid there isn't enough room. We're inviting you up here with us. Hey, wait a minute, I got an idea. Let's grab that canvas and stretch it out. Blackie can jump into it. You better climb right up here and hand over those real diamonds. Oh, so that's what you're after. Stretch out the canvas, go on, okay. get it. Hey, look, you see if you can find somebody to help, will you? And I'll try to get these out of here. I think I'd better stay right where I am. You want us to pump you full of lead? Well, if you do that, I'll be so heavy, I'll topple over into the street. Then you'll never get the diamonds. No? <laughs> Beck, you better go down in the street. You can be the first one to meet Blackie when he arrives. Right. These two men have offered to help. Oh, wonderful. Oh, that's swell. Will yeah, you, you please, grab this? Please grab a hold of that canvas, gentlemen, and hold it tight like a net. Hey, that's Faraday. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So long, boys. Nice to have met you. Are you all right? Do I look all right? You look fine to me. Blackie, look out! Oh, I got him! Oh, you Come got on, him. gang. We've got work to do. You got him. Hold him! Hold, hold that on! You got him, you... Oh. I had him. Now, fat life, this is a blackout. Well, I'm Inspector Ferry. Oh, yeah? And I'm the mayor. You're under arrest. You see that badge? Yeah. Yeah, we're after a killer, and you let him get right away from us. Oh, I'm sorry. I have my duties, too. He can't get very far. Come on. If we keep running around in this blackout, somebody is sure to stop us. And this is no time to explain things to the authorities. What about camping down there for a while? Well, I guess that's as good as any. Come on, Betty. Quiet. 
sorry. Hey, this isn't a bad hangout. Well, I wouldn't like to spend the rest of my life here. Well, it's better than the roof. Now, will you come over and sit down and relax? Yeah, sure. Quietly. You were awfully worried about you, and... Well, when I think that I was the cause of it all, oh, I... Oh, it's nothing. It's nothing. Blackie's got a funny idea of what's nothing. Just trying to beat a murder rap, that's all. Murder? I'm sorry, Betty. I wasn't going to say anything about it. But now that the runt spilled the beans, you might as well know. We've bumped our shins on every inch of that fire escape. Blackie ain't hiding there. Well, he can't get very far tonight. The warden's keeping the streets clear. Come on, let's keep on looking. Oh, I should have kept my big mouth shut. I'm sorry, Blackie. I did... It's all right, Runt. Betty had to know about her father sooner or later. But there's no need of all of us sitting on top of this volcano. You better get her out of here. Sure, go ahead, Runt. Blackie and I can finish this job. Sure. Please don't worry about me. Now, look, Miss Barnaby, when Blackie says to get you out of here, it's as good as done. Come on, you come with me. Thanks, Blackie, for everything. She's a swell kid. <laughs> now, what's so funny? Well, I knew that book of yours was going to have a lot of adventure in it, but I didn't know it was going to have any romance. Uh, cut it out, will you? Oh. We've covered the Sally from front to back. There's not a sign of them. You look down there? No. I'll look myself. Give me one of those bulbs, quick. Number one. Hey, Joe. I guess I better go down and take a look. Give me another bulb, quick. Give me another bulb, quick. on that one. We would have a blackout to go with Blackie's luck. <laughs> hey, Blackie, wait for me, will you? I forgot my camera. There he is. Get him. Oh, oh, right. Wait a minute, boys. Wait a minute. Don't tell me who you are. Let me guess. You don't want me, Faraday. You want Herschel. Now, what makes you think I want Herschel? Because he's the man that stole the real diamonds from Barnaby and then killed it. Oh, uh, if you know so much, maybe you can tell me where Herschel is. Yes, I can tell you where Herschel is. He's right at the bottom of the stairs. I don't give us those bedtime stories. All right, then take me over to Herschel's office in the Flamingo Club and I'll show you the real diamonds. We're not going to fall for any more of your tricks. Oh, you can write them yarns in your book if any jury will let you live that long. We're going to go to headquarters. Come on, walk. Hey, don't let him get away! Stop! There he is! Get your hands up, Blackie. All right. This is no time for fooling. Remember, now anything you say will be held against you, so you better keep your mouth shut. Come on, we're going to headquarters. All right, get out. I never knew Blackie when he had less to say. He's probably taking up his next fish story. Ah, the all-clear signal. And with him on his way to the clink, everything certainly is all clear. Oh, hello, Inspector. Who's that, another subversive? My old friend, Boston Blackie. Yeah. Say, if that's Boston Blackie, he sure is a whiz in the art of makeup. <laughs> hey, you. What's the idea of giving us a runaround? Why didn't you talk up? You told me anything I said would be held against me. Oh. We could hold him as an accomplice after the fact. Now, wait a minute. It wasn't my fault you grabbed me. I'll bet Blackie arranged this for you, and I'll bet you know where he is right this minute. Well, I don't know, but I can make a pretty good guess. You'd better guess right. Oh, if you and this Charlie McCarthy of yours it would only listen to Blackie in the first place, oh. you'd save a lot of time in the second place. And in the third place, Quit you... Quit stalling. Where's Blackie? Well, he told you that Herschel had the diamonds, didn't he? And he told you that Herschel killed Barnaby, didn't he? Uh, and he told you that Herschel was in the basement, didn't he? And if you knew a clue when you saw one, you'd realize that Blackie was probably down at that Flamingo Club breaking the case for you. Well, let's get started. But if you're running us up a blind alley, I'm gonna have plenty to say to you. I can't imagine anything worse than that.
wrong. I was gonna split with you and Beck. Yeah? Let me tell you what's the matter with you, Joe. You've got an idea that you're the smartest guy in the world, that I'm just a dummy. You've been using Beck and me for suckers. You knocked off Barnaby to get those stones. And we'd still be chasing Blackie if it hadn't have been that I heard him spill to Faraday. No, wait a minute. Shut up! Hand over those diamonds. And be quick. The diamonds were in the safe, but I... I think Blackie took them. You think, huh? How about looking? You've saved the state electrician a job. You won't find the diamonds on Herschel. Then Herschel was right. You got them. Maybe. Where are they? <coughs> what kind of powder are you using in that pop gun? You mind if I had some water? No. Pop yourself. Thanks. <coughs> Here's how. Mind if I have another? No. What's more? Thanks. For the last time, Blackie, where are those stones? <laughs> Maybe I don't want to tell you. And if you don't, you're never going to live to tell anybody else. Now, look, Walsh. I think you and I can do a little business together. Maybe. But don't try to pull any of that hero stuff like you did when you beat it with the girl. <laughs> well, here's my proposition. You tell me where Barnaby's body is, and I'll lead you to the spot I hid the diamonds. Where are they? I, 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 I know you're forgetting my proposition. <laughs> Sounds like Faraday's coming back. I don't think either one of us want to see him right now. Suppose we go out the back way, in a hurry. Okay. But no tricks. <laughs> tricks. Diamonds. It's a long walk. Then we'll ride. Well, think of the tire shortage. What are you trying to do? Be funny? <laughs> How about Faraday's car? He gets priorities. Well, that would be stealing. But I'm at your service. Uh, I mean, mercy. <laughs> Looks like Blackie got here before us. Start driving. No key. From what I heard about you, that shouldn't stop you. <laughs> you flatter me. Send a fingerprint expert and some policemen to guide this place. Okay, Chief. Tell me something, Walsh. Why did Herschel kill Ed Barnaby? To keep him from spilling to the cops. 
Well, you look like the kind of a guy who'd have more sense than to get mixed up in a thing like that. I didn't do nothing except help hide the body. You know enough about law to realize that you're an accessory after the fact and a likely prospect for the hot seat. <laughs> what they got to catch me for, Splaggy? I'm blowing with those diamonds. Say, Captain, get an full of this. <laughs> Can you imagine the look on that dumb Faraday's face when he finds out that Barnaby's body is in the back of this car? <laughs> and he's been chauffeuring him around all night, looking for it. <laughs> in the back of this car? Yeah. Back and me put it there. Herschel <laughs> figured that the only place the bulls wouldn't look would be right under their noses. Well, that's right smart. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you driving me to? Out to the Wilton Reservoir. I've got the diamonds hidden there at the base of a tree. Hey, ain't you taking the long way around? Know a shorter way? Attention, cars 78 and 79, Wilton Reservoir District. Cars 78 and 79, look for stolen police car. OK. Who? Sure, he's here. Just a minute. Captain wants to talk to you. Now yeah, look, Captain, get your men over here in a hurry. I want to get after Boston Blackie. And can you tell me what do you expect to use for transportation? Your car's been stolen. Huh? Are you kidding? Wait a minute. Well, what's the matter with him? He says my car's been stolen. Well, how do you like that? Are you sure we came over in it? Oh. Now, look, Captain, if you're so smart, maybe you can tell me who stole it. Sure, it was your old friend, Boston Blackie. Eddie Barnaby's body's in the storage compartment of your bus. Been there all night. What? Blackie's heading towards Wilton Reservoir with Sammy Walsh. In your car. Well, thanks for the information. You need me, Chief? I need a keeper. Car. Yes, I've heard they have those things around town. Step on it. What do you make of it? Your guess is as good as mine. Attention all officers in the vicinity of the Wilton Reservoir. Be on the lookout for a stolen police car. Pick up its occupants, Boston Blackie and Sammy Walsh. Be careful, both men are armed. You double-cross it. Step on it. You heard me, step on it. I'm glad to see you fellas in my life. Oh, yeah? You can wrap that guy up in cellophane and deliver him to Inspector Faraday. And if you look in the rear compartment, you'll find Ed Barnaby's body.
are gathered here in the presence of these witnesses to join this man and this woman in the bonds of matrimony. It's the cops. Faraday and Matthews. Oh, say, that's nice of them. They probably want to bury the hatchet and see the runt get married. I'll let them in. Arthur still believes in Santa Claus. When those two cops show up, it's for no good. Well, I think you're a good loser. I really do. Well, there's no rest for an inspector. If it isn't one thing, it's another. What have we done now, Mr. Faraday, and take your hat off? What's the idea of busting in on a wedding? This is the third time we've started it, and this time it's got to take. Are you Dixie Rose Blossom? That's me, bud. We just wanted to make sure. <laughs> they didn't recognize you without your bubble. I've got a warrant for your arrest, and the charge is bigamy. Bi bigamy? What do you mean? Will somebody get the run of dictionary? Maybe you'd better tell him Mrs. Henderson of Cleveland, Mrs. Nelson of Detroit. Hey, she's playing the American League. <laughs> Perhaps we'd better be running along, hmm? Whatever happens to me now, it'll be better than being married to that miniature screwball. Gee, Matthews. <laughs> this is the first time Faraday ever did me a good turn. <laughs> <laughs>